Today, I want to show how 3D printing can be applied to Leathercraft to create custom molds for wet forming leather projects. I will compare it to the method that uses a paper based mold, both of which are very similar when designing. A 3D printed mold can offer a lot more in terms of complexity, however, that will take a bit more design time. For my next project, I wanted to mold leather around this vintage watch for a watch strap. I originally set out to do this using a cardboard based mold similar to how I made a crocodile key fob in a previous video which you can find in the video description. I will be using this watch as the inside mold and create some exterior molds for the outside. Now let's have a look at how the different methods compare. The first step for molding is to get the outline of your molded part. I am taking a CAD based approach so I started with a scan of my watch and imported the image into NanoCAD. The first step is to draw in the outline of the watch case as close to the scan image as possible. Then take the outline across to the side and clean up all the lines and square up all the edges and join all the lines into a single polyline. Next I will scale the outline to the actual object dimensions. This is done using the align function to align the longest dimension to the actual length. Then, by selecting yes to scale, now I have an accurate scaled outline of the watch. To create a mold, I can now offset the outline based on the thickness of the leather that I plan to use. This gives the inside boundary of the mold. Then, I can offset this 10mm to give the outside outline of the top mold. I can then copy this outside outline which will then become the outline to use as the lower mold. This is how the two mold outlines look when printed out. The next step is to trim it and stick it to some thick paper or cardboard to give it some strength. Ideally you want your mold material to be something hard so it keeps its shape but also needs to be soft enough that it can be cut out with all the details intact. After cutting it out it is ready to be used for wet forming leather. I will be using this vegetable tan kangaroo leather and begin by soaking the leather in room temperature water for 10 minutes. Then remove all the dripping water off the leather with a paper towel and then apply it to the watch which is covered with plastic wrap to protect it from water damage. Mold the leather around the watch by hand and then apply the molds to the front and the back. I will secure the mold on with some binder clips and then set this aside to dry. Now let's have a look at the 3D printed mold. For the 3D printed method, I will again begin with the scan to get the outline of the watch using NanoCAD. I find it a lot easier to get a nice clean outline from this type of CAD software rather than using dedicated 3D CAD software. NanoCAD has 3D capabilities but they are not available in the free version. AutoCAD also has good 3D capabilities but you will need to pay for that too. In FreeCAD, which is an open source program for 3D parts design, I can import the DXF outline and combine it into a single outline. Then offset the outline for allowance for the leather to get the inside of the mold and another offset for the outside perimeter of the mold. These initial drawings can be upgraded into a sketch and then this sketch can be used to create a body in the parts design menu. From here I can use the pad command to give the sketch some thickness and turn it into a 3D design already looking good for molding. The bottom mold is simply the full area of the outside outline and I can give it thickness and turn it into a 3D part using the same method. The 3D design process also allows you to add detail to the mold that you cannot do with paper. Here I'm designing a recessed structure that will run on the inside of the top mold in contact with the leather. This should give a clear mark on the leather after molding that I can use to accurately trim off the excess leather around the perimeter. Now the design work is done. These top and bottom molds can then be exported as STL files 
and then import it into a slicing program. The slicing program that I'm using here is called Cura. Here I can import and position the 3D parts onto my printer bed along with a lot of other printer options, such as printing these parts one by one. Then the printing file is simply transferred into a memory card ready to print. This is my new printer that I've just picked up recently, so I can now print my own parts. It is a Creality Ender 3 V2, which is a good starter printer with a lot of parts available to replace and upgrade. After a few hours assembly, the printer is built and ready to use. For my first print, I printed out the traditional Benchy to check everything was working well and it's looking good to go. Now it is time to print out my mold parts. After inserting the memory card into the printer, I can start the printer process. The printing time for these two mold parts was around one and a half hours. These are the molds finished printing and ready to use. You can see the recessed area on the top mold, which should make a discrete borderline show up nicely on the leather after wet forming. Again, after soaking the leather for 10 minutes in water and removing the dripping water, I can apply it to the watch. And then, after molding by hand, I can then put on the printed mold to the top and bottom of the leather and install clips around the edge to help apply firm pressure to the leather and let it dry. This is how the 3D printed mold looks after I have left the molding overnight with the leather drying in shape. Now I can have a look and compare how the two methods for molding turned out. They are both based on the same design and use the same watch on the inside, so the centre section looks the same. However, around the edges they look different. The 3D printed one on the right has a much more defined edge than the paper mould, as the inside edge of the printed mould is much harder than the cardboard and does not flex under pressure. One drawback of the printed mould is that it has left an imprint of the layering from the printing process. However, I think this can be eliminated by printing at a much higher resolution and sanding the printed parts smooth before using them, which I did not do this time. The final shape of the paper molded leather is not flat. It has been slightly warped and does not sit flat on my table. This is due to the bottom mold not holding its shape under pressure, which could be fixed by using a stronger material. The printed method does not have this issue and the leather can sit perfectly flat on my table. The recess area that I designed into the printed mold has allowed for a well-defined borderline to show up around the perimeter on the leather. This will make it very easy to trim a well-spaced and accurate border for a final project. There is also a way to design in a raised line into the mold that will make an impression on the leather that can be used as a stitching line mark and even be able to mark in stitching holes if you wanted to go to that level of detail within your design. This is something that I haven't tried yet but it could be designed in CAD software. Overall the paper molded leather turned out quite well but it is limited by the cardboard material that I use which is fairly soft especially when in contact with water. Generally the harder the material that you use in your mold the more defined your molded leather will turn out but you cannot have the material too hard or you will have problems with being able to cut it out cleanly and accurately. Wood is another material that is useful for wet molding as it can be carved to design and hold its shape well. But working with wood can be time consuming because of its hardness and at the end of the day the wooden mold will never be as accurate as a 3D printed mold. With the 3D printed mold the edges show up a lot more defined and I think that makes for a much more professional looking result. Overall, I think 3D printed molds are the best as long as you have access to a printer. The molds that you print are at low cost and can be reused multiple times. The level of detail you can put into printed molds is unmatched and really only limited by your creativity and design ability. I hope from this video that you can see the benefits of 3D printed molds over a more basic paper based approach. This printed mold that I made for this video can be improved on so I will be making some small updates to its design. 
I plan to use it for my next project video with crocodile leather for a new watch strap. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss it. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Mm -hmm.